Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Betrago Pinzon, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering arthrology and the common fractures. Before we start, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin! Now that we have reviewed the bones and all of the different shapes and landmarks from the previous video, the next subject that we'll be talking about is the joints. Arthrology. Arthrology is the field of study of the joints, or the study of how the bones articulate with one another. Joints are the reason bones are able to be moved around when the muscles relax and flex. But like the bones, there's different types of joints. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning and Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. There are two classifications of joints the functional and the structural classifications. Let's start with the functional. This classification is based on the mobility of the joint. There are three subdivisions within this class. The synarthrosis, or the immovable joints, the amphiarthrosis, which are slightly movable joints, and the diarthrosis, which are freely movable joints. Next is the structural classifications. This classification group is based on the type of tissues that make up and bind the articulating bones. There are three types of connective tissues, the fibrous, cartilaginous, and the synovial structures. Let's start with the fibrous joints. The joints are composed of fibrous connective tissues or ligaments and have no joint cavity. There are three types. These three are the strongest joints in the body because they are immovable. Syndesmosis. These are immovable joints or slightly movable joints that is made of sheets of fibrous connective tissues. For example, the inferior tibiofibular joint. Next is a suture, which is an immovable joint only found in the skull made of strong connective tissues, as you can see here in the skull. Next is the gumphosis joint, which are immovable joints only found in the root of the teeth that articulate with the alveolar socket. They are made of fibrous periodontal ligaments, as you can see here in the lateral skull. Next is the cartilaginous joints. These joints are made of hyaline cartilage or fibrous cartilage, and just like the previous group, it does not have a joint cavity. They are virtually immovable joints. The first one is the symphysis, which is a slightly movable joint made of a pad or disc of fibroid cartilage, which is built for strength and shock absorption. As you can see here, this is the pubic symphysis. And these are the intervertebral discs that are made for shock absorption. Next is the synchondrosis joints, which are immovable joints made of rigid cartilage uniting two bones. For example, as you can see here, this is a synchondrosis joint that has not fully calcified, also known as the growth plate. And when it fully matures and calcifies, the growth plate disappears and becomes a line. The third group is the synovial joints. These joints permit for a wide range of motion. The joints are freely movable with articulating capsules made of smooth and slippery cartilage. For example, here's a diagram illustrating a synovial joint. The capsule is filled with synovial fluid, which allows the joint to freely move with little to no resistance. There are six types of synovial joints in the body, which we use on a daily basis. The first one is a glide joint which is the simplest joint of the group. This is described by the flattened or slightly curved surface, as you can see here in my diagram. This joint only has uniaxial movement or glides slightly in one axis. Examples include the intercarpal joints and the intertarsal joints. As you can see here in your wrist, these are the intercarpal joints. And in your foot, you have the intertarsal joints. Next is the hinge joint. This is the second simplest joint in the group, which has a uniaxial movement. This is when two or more bones articulate with only flexion and extension movements. If you think of a door, if you close it and open it, this is known as a hinge joint. Examples include the elbow, knee, and the digits. For example, here's a knee joint. As you can see here, you're able to 
flex and extend the knee also with the elbow you're able to flex and extend next is the pivot joint this joint has a uniaxial movement which is described when bones articulate only in rotation as you can see here in my little diagram you're only able to twist side to side this is a rotational movement Examples is a C1, C2 articulation, or the top of the cervical spine. This articulation between these two allow the skull to be able to rotate side to side. Next is the ellipsoid joint. This has a biaxial movement. This is when two or more bones articulate with flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, and circumduction, which is a combination of all of them. As you can see here, we're able to have multiple movements a good example is a radiocarpal joint. Next is a saddle joint. This has a biaxial movement, which is similar to the ellipsoid joint, but this joint is made of bones that are shaped with a concave and convex structures. As you can see here in my little diagram, an example is a carpal metacarpal joint between the trapezium and the first metacarpal bone. Lastly, the ball and socket joint. This has a multi-axial movement, articulation where a partially spherical end lies within a concave depression within an articulating bone. As you can see here in my little diagram, you're able to have flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction, and circumduction, which is a combination of all of them. Examples include the hip and shoulder joints. As you can see here, the humeral head in the glenoid fossa is a ball and socket joint, and the acetabulum with the femoral head is also a ball and socket joint. The last section we'll be covering will be fractures. As you may know, a fracture is a break in the bone. Fractures are classified according to the nature of the break. There are four classifications of fractures. There's a closed, displaced, non-displaced, and open fractures. Closed. This is a fracture that does not have a break through the skin. As you can see here, there's a fracture, but does not break the skin. This place is a serious fracture in which the bone are not in anatomical alignment. As you can see here, the femur is more lateral while the rest of the leg is medial. A non-displaced fracture is a fracture in which the bone retains its normal alignment. Lastly is an open fracture, which is a serious fracture in which the bone breaks or projects through the skin, as you can see here. Now that we have finished the classifications, we'll be talking about the common fractures. Try not to get confused the classifications with the common fractures. Compression fractures. These occur when one or more bones in the spine weaken and crumble, as a result from a trauma or a loss of bone, for example, osteoporosis. Here's an example of one. As you can see here, this is a triangle-shaped vertebral body while the rest of the vertebral bodies are square shaped. As you can see, there's a loss in height, which indicates a compression fracture. Next is an open or compound fracture. This is a fracture where a broken bone breaks through the skin. Next is a simple fracture. This is a fracture of the bone only, without damaging the surrounding tissues or breaking the skin. As you can see here, this is a hairline fracture or a simple fracture. Next is the green stick fracture. This is a fracture most common in children. This is where the soft bone of children bends and partially breaks, as you can see here. Transverse. This is a fracture of the bone where the break is at a right angle to the long bone, as you can see here. Next is a spiral fracture, which is a fracture that occurs when the long bone is broken with a twisting force. Comminuted fracture is when the bone breaks or splinters into more than two fragments, as you can see here with this tibia fibula. Lastly, the impact fracture. This occurs when broken ends of bones are jammed together by a force of injury. As you can see here, the femoral body is moving up while the head is moving down. This is an impact fracture. These are just the common fractures that you shouldn't be familiarized in the beginning. When we get to further episodes, I'll be covering the more specific fractures, for example, a Smith fracture, Hangman fracture, which are more specific fractures that are named uniquely for a specific body part.
but for now try to focus and get familiar with all the different types of fractures and the different types of joints. This concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember practice and use the terminology in your daily life. Remember practice makes perfect. Don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Also you can follow me on Instagram at lazybones underscore radiology. Thank you very much. Have a great day.